Hello friends, welcome to HBAV Classrooms. Today we have with us Nicholas Chondi from Florence and uh, Nicholas has done his foundation in arts in St. In Martin's in London. Yeah. St. Martin's yeah. in London, following which he did his uh, graduation in fine arts from Florence Academy. Uh, Falmouth first, so I did my BA fine arts in Falmouth okay. in, in the UK. Uh, and then I moved to Florence to do the three-year program at the Florence Academy of Art. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. And, and then, after that, you've also been teaching at the academy. Yeah. Yeah. For so four I, was, years. I was teaching for four years. Yeah. And then now I'm a freelance painter, working in Florence. And yeah. Enjoying life. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> so Nicholas is going to be giving us a demo in self-portrait, and he's been quite fond of doing self-portraits, and these are few. Uh, self-portraits done by him and so we are very happy that you agreed to give us a demo. Thank you for coming. Thanks. just make um, some simple uh, proportional marks um, that just explain sort of this is sort of my eyebrow height, this is my uh, forehead height, not my hair height, my forehead height, uh, sort of my nose height, and uh, this will be sort of lower beard, uh, lower to middle beard. So. I don't do much more sort of, um, we say, comparative measuring than that. <laughs> um, I want to think about where I'm positioning the head. So I'm also looking at just the overall, uh, the overall sort of height of everything, and the height versus the overall width that will be, the head will be. Okay, so. When you're doing a self-portrait, it's important to give yourself some, some points of reference to keep your head in position. Um, so what I'm using at the moment is uh, this eyebrow on the left being virtually a straight line, uh, a straight line reference point. So I can f see if my head is moving one way or the other too much. So that's more or less the eyebrow height. And the idea is you want to keep the, uh, the, first, the first painting movements quite simple. Don't go, don't go in for detail too early on. Uh, it's, uh, it's not, not not immediately, it's not very productive to do that straight away. Um, so I'm just looking at the general impression. And this part takes a little bit of time, even though it's a basic blocking of the head, you wanna make sure that the proportions are more or less in the right place. So then measuring by eye, um, 
I start using these sort of diagonal uh, measuring diagonal. I'm looking at rhythms, so I'm looking at sort of the corner of my eye here and moving and looking at the diagonal that happens there, which brings me to the tip of my nose. Um, and then I can remove that. And I can place the base of the nose based off my previous marks. I can base, put the base of the nose in. And then a line for the nose. So when, when you're doing something in three quarters like this, it's quite a good idea <clears throat> to start off by looking for what we call the sort of the Van Dyke Z, which is a, a Z that goes across the eyebrow, down the nose, to the tip of the nose, and then to the base of the nose. So it creates this sort of Z shape, and that helps form the first, uh, the first sort of reference points for the overall face. Um, and that gives us a reference point there. A lot, of, a, a lot of the face has sort of triangles in it, and this is what I use quite often to sort of measure, measure what I'm doing. So again, I'm then looking at this triangle here to more or less find, it's not precise, but more or less find the base of the nose there. So I'm already, I'm sort of constructing, although, although this seems like sort of quite specific information, it's just, it's all construction. So I, I'm not leaving anything, um, I'm not leaving anything to, to chance as it were. It's, it's, I'm not, I'm, there's no guesswork involved. It's just observational um, because I've made my initial marks and then I'm, I'm making the statement that that's where I'm putting the side of the face and everything of that is, is observational proportion. So there's nothing that I've, I've left to guessing where I'm, where I'm placing things. So. There are certain references I use for getting sort of the, the tilt of the head. And this part here, just sort of the underneath the, the cheek is, is quite a major sort of line of reference that I use. And then that will give me the, the back how the head is receding back. And then, and start again using these sort of lines of reference, I can start making, making points. At some point soon as well, I just wanna put a, uh, a rough line for the eye. Again, that just helps me sort of place, place what I'm, what I'm doing. And then, so I'm sort of, I'm, I'm doing a little bit of both. I'm, I'm constructing from outside in, and I'm also constructing sort of inside out. I'm just, I, I mean, there are many ways of starting a painting. For me, this, this just works because I'm, uh, I'm using information. I'm using information as I need it.
Um, Can you just elaborate on what you mean by outside in and inside out? So using using information that is sort of inside the overall shape of the head, mm. and then thinking about sort of the out the outer parts as well. So it's it's sort of looking. So there's this there's there's sort of as we say like the, the silhouette of the head. Mm. And then there's sort of the internal features. So I'm not using sort of the specific, I'm not drawing an eye, drawing a nose, but I'm using uh, internal reference points and external reference points okay. to, 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 to mark out what I'm, what, I'm, what I'm seeing. It's just sort of, it, it comes down to sort of this idea of measuring, measuring with your eye. Um, rather than just always taking these little measurements. I find that measuring from information that's just useful to you, that you can see straight away. Like there's no, there's, there's no reason for me to place that there, except that that's a good reference point from cheek to cheek. So there's, that's not what I'm seeing, but it's just helping me mark out the, the position. Usually I'd be probably even a little bit quicker than this, but... Um, Just a little. So that's the top of my forehead. So I'm going to place. Just going to check my eyes. Okay. So there's quite a lot that can sort of be done just in the early stages, but uh, you know you can you can you can. There are many different ways of. Um, sort of going through this process, but I like to keep it quite, quite basic, quite simple um, at the start. Um, and you'll see in a minute that I'll, I'll start working in mass, uh, which means to work in sort of work with light more than, more than just sort of drawing out. Um, Does having a beard simplify the job? <laughs> Uh, like, I mean, it helps you uh, isolate the light shape because you know yeah. it's kind of dark. Yeah, in in the early stages, it's it's certainly more um, it's it's more helpful. Okay. It's more it's more it's more it's 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 sort of easier to block in just a big mass of dark. Mm -hmm. But in the in the later stages, <laughs> painting beards is quite it's quite a, quite a challenge. <laughs> uh, it's not it's not as easy as it as it as it seems that you just paint a big dark. There's a lot if you look at all the variation. Not just not the individual parts, but if you if you just look at all the variation of color, so here it's orange, here it's gray, you know, here it's darker, lighter. So you get all, all these sort of, um, you know, it's quite it's quite difficult to 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 capture all of that, um, and reduce the information that you're seeing. So you're not painting every hair, but you're painting a collection of hairs, a rhythm, um, which is quite quite you know it can be quite quite tricky to do. Um, and sometimes it's very difficult, like for me, for instance, that's, that's the bottom of my, um, <clears throat> to me sort of, that's probably more or less where my beard lies, uh, the bottom of my beard. So trying to actually describe a chin even is, is quite, is, it's quite difficult when you, when you get, when you get round to it. Um, so let's just get in. Um, So now I'm just starting to apply a simple, um, what do you say, a simple dark versus light sort of shape. So an indication of dark versus light. Um, again, what, what, what I'm trying to do when I do this initial drawing, drawing stage, what I'm trying to do is remove, um, is remove sort of any guesswork in the drawing. So. I, you know, I'm not sort of touching over here until I know more about sort of the, the, I know more about sort of the light shape versus the dark shape before I decide. I'm not putting anything definite down there to, to distinguish the whole head until I know more about, about what, I'm, what I'm painting. So a general rule as well is the closer you get to, the closer you get to, um, to nature, by that I mean the closer you get to 
to what I'm looking at, i.e. the more information I put in into the painting, the more I see the mistakes. So at this stage, you want to keep the idea of the painting quite simple, um, quite basic, um, because things will, things will inevitably move around quite a lot. So you, you sort of want to get it, you, you want the information to be as accurate as possible, but as simple as possible. So at least you keep it as flexible as possible and then... Right, yeah, so it's like, it's sort of like locking, locking in things. So you sort of, you want to keep it as, at this stage, there's so many things, you know, it's a very simple sort of, um, it's a very simple, uh, you know, initial start. Um, and so, yeah, exactly. You want to keep it as flexible as possible. Um, so that everything can move and shift around e easily, easily. <clears throat> excuse me. So the uh, so it's 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 sort of that. Uh, it's that idea that if if you start drawing every, you know, I'm just putting in an indication where the eyes are. I'm not already trying to sort of design and draw the eyes. Um, I'm just placing them as a reference. If I start designing and drawing everything, I might find later on that um, that things, you know, that something has to move, uh, you know, by <laughs> a millimeter or you know half a centimeter or something like that, you know, something something very small, which is what you're is, is sort of the, the the proportions and the measurements you're dealing with at this stage uh, of of a painting is you're dealing with these sort of quite small, seemingly in, insignificant measurements but actually they it's amazing the human eye is capable of picking up those sort of errors the more you uh, but the problem is is at this stage it's so easy to 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 to, to not see those mistakes um So now we're just sort of entering into a very basic idea of light versus dark. So right now you're blocking in mm -hmm. uh, more in angular lines and... To start with, to start with, yeah. Um, it's interesting, there's even, there's even quite a lot of debate um, surrounding surrounding that idea um, throughout sort of centuries you know a lot a lot of if you think about the beautiful rhythms and beautiful lines that uh, created sort of during Renaissance period and things like that it, there's a lot of debate as to whether you whether really we should be thinking more about sort of making making rhythms and lines uh, but for me, that that happens that happens a little bit later on. I can certainly start thinking about it now. Um, but for me, it happens it happens a lot later on. This idea of uh, the the idea of um, sort of the final rhythms. But some people argue that it makes the painting a little too static, a little too stiff. Uh, it depends. It depends. I, I always think it's sort of you know if if the if the end result if the end result isn't 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 static or or stiff then then it's not really a problem. But um, but I can understand how why why people would sit, sort of think that. Um,
Another marker I'm always using is just the uh, the angle of the nose. If I obviously I'm always moving to look at the palette or anything like that. I don't want to keep keep when I'm doing this. I like to I like to also occasionally sort of move move myself a little bit as well and just see if there's something at this stage something I can uh, I can change it alter change a little bit um, about the overall sort of composition of the face um, so sometimes I'm sort of thinking you know actually maybe I'd like you know sometimes little things like what happens if I sort of raise an eyebrow or change an eyebrow I want to I want to have the freedom at that stage to make these decisions um, before I lock anything into too solid Decide some expression at this stage? Yeah, quite often. Um, although usually usually with something like a major expression, as in if I'm sort of if if there's something very old very um, if, if there's something that, that's very different, I'll I'll sort of decide or arrange that at the beginning of the painting. Um, or decide that I want that sort of emotion in the painting. But you know, so Subtle emotion can 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 be sort of conveyed. You know what what if I raise that eyebrow, that says something completely different to it just being straight. So it's it's subtle things like that I can feel free to change later on if I want to slightly raise that, change the arch of that maybe, and then and also just slightly changes the position of the eyes as well. So it's things like that. If I want to change like the whole the whole expression and. You know, do that. That's something I'll think of. You know, before I start the painting. Otherwise, otherwise, you you end up in a world of trouble of consistently shifting things around. But certainly, smaller, smaller things. I I I will I will, you know, sort of shift throughout the process of the painting. And again, just using these sort of diagonals as I place the. I'm not, you know, qu quite often when I'm sort of looking, looking for, looking for, um, for drawing uh, proportions and things like that, I'm I'm taking sort of these 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 vertical these these um, uh, diagonal lines that I was talking about, and I'm sort of looking over to here, and then I'm also taking that and thinking how that relates to the nose as well, and seeing where where the position of the nose is. So I'm always using sort of two, two or three reference points. You know, I'm looking to there, I'm looking to there, to just place one, 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 one part of the face, you know, uh, or one area of the face. And that sort of, that, that enables me to make a, a sort of less, less mistakes. Um, because you're always relating that point of, that, that, that point of measurement, that point of where you're placing, you're always relating it to, uh, always to sort of several different areas of the face. So by relating, by relating lines to as many different reference points as of the face, you can always check, you're always checking that you're, you're sort of in, in proportion, uh, more or less. Um, so whatever changes, everything changes. So you, again, it's this thing where you're constantly shifting around, um, just checking that the proportions work. Uh, but you're using so many different references for that. I've probably done a little bit too much there. Let's just go and take that down. So, as we were saying about the beard before, actually, I, I think about just just as I do with the portrait. I think about where where is light and where is dark in the beard, and still try and abstract that. So I maintain this sort of level of of uh, this feeling of light throughout the process. Because um, essentially what we're painting is we're painting light. We're painting how light falls upon the, the, the on, on, on anything, how, how we're painting, it's, it's, it's sort of, that's what we're sort of initially painting. Um, so essentially everything we see in nature is built up of a 
built up of um, a form, a shape, and a colour. And so that's what we're painting, and light is, is what sort of creates that. It creates the form, it creates the, creates the, the, the colour, what we call the value, the tone. So that's where the bottom of that side's coming from. I also talk to myself occasionally when I'm painting. <laughs> if I'm talking, uh, genuinely, uh, generally talking to myself. Um, So it looks, you know, very, very basic and simple. It doesn't really convey much. And this is usually, I don't, I don't hang around too long. Um, it feels like I'm hanging around, but if, if, if we think that each, each painting takes about, say, oh yeah, gone. Go, oh, oh, um, if, we, if, if we're thinking that each painting sort of more or less takes sort of 30 hours or something like that, um, actually just spending an hour in this stage doesn't, doesn't really, uh, doesn't really seem like that much of a long time. It's like, uh, I feel like pe people are always in a bit of a rush sometimes with this, this stage and actually what, even though it doesn't have to be perfect, it has to, it has to, you have to have a good sort of, uh, setup. Um, a good sense of, 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 of what you're what you're painting. I think that's um, you're saying that this stage, uh, in a way, you should spend good enough time till you've got everything right, marked out right. Until it feels right. Okay. Um, until it feels. You can usually feel if something's. Uh, you don't like something or something feels a little bit off. Um, you can usually, you can usually sense it at this stage. You can sense it. You may not know the answer to it, but you can sense it. Um, um, wish I had a like a, a big round nose because this nose to paint is incredibly frustrating because <laughs> it doesn't it, it has it's very pointed and it doesn't have a, a sort of has quite a complex form to it but you just sort of try and get in. so I check, I check myself occasionally just with things as well, just like sort of introduce things that you wouldn't think you would need at this stage. But again, they're just checkpoints. I'm not putting anything specific. I'm just seeing if, if sort of things more or less feel. So checking the, the looking, looking at certain shapes. So sort of saying to myself, okay, so when I get to this sort of stage where I'm using light and dark as a reference, I'm starting to ask myself more questions about sort of the shape of this versus the shape of this. In size, in feeling, in proportion, um, I'm starting to move sort of more into that category of questioning, which is, which is just, um, you know, how does that shape feel versus something else? How does it, how does it, how does it look? Um, does it feel too big, too small? Um, you know, usually, usually I try and ask myself those questions, um, like quite often. Um, and I try and simplify the question as, as much as possible. So I look at that and I say, does it feel too, uh, if I imagine it as a square, is it too, uh, is it, is it, is it, is it too long or is it too short? Is it too wide? Is it too narrow? Um, 
I try and simplify in that, so I just think, okay, it's a square. Does it feel like the right type of square, or does it feel like the right type of rectangle? I should say probably. Um, and then I and then I go from there, and I always try and simplify, even at, even at the last stages, when I'm just making very small, uh, small um, adjustments to the painting. I'm always asking myself. Um, what it about just that initial big big shape that initial big question so the more you f the more you simplify the question the the um the more simple the answer is i guess um and it's the simple answers that sort of help you get help you get sort of the right the right the right solution um because the, the the problem might be complex, but the the the, uh, the initial the the finding the problem is is is, is sort of you know the the, met the first step. So it's sort of important to you know keep the question simple, get the an right answer, and then assess what the problem is in general. If that if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And then just using other reference points again. Just seeing that. When you feel that it sort of starts to look a little a little bit like you, <laughs> you can start you can start to you can start to sort of move on. I'm just I'm not completely comfortable with it yet, but for the sake of, of, of speed I'll move on. Um, got good light today so we can actually sort of we can we can work a little bit slowly for the sake of our viewers can mm -hmm. you just uh, give us some details of the materials you're using yeah sure yeah I mean what is the base on which you're painting right now so the canvas is um, it's linen. Okay. Um, it's on a on a wooden board. Mm -hmm. The reason I put it on board uh, rather than on stretcher bars um, is because I, I I'm just one of these people that doesn't like the the flexibility. Yeah. Like for for me being able to put something down and knowing the pressure mm. and feeling that pressure without any bouncing back mm. that's that's I, I like I like I like that <laughs> mm. um, that's that's what I want um, I like to not feel that sort of any any I really like to know exactly what 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 my uh, um, what what the what, what my brush is doing at any one time um, <clears throat> so it's basically canvas attached to board. Um, so a layer of rabbit skin glue onto the board first. Um, then the raw uh, unprimed linen uh, stretched over the board. Mm -hmm. And then rabbit, glue, uh, rabbit skin glued again, okay. twice over. So the, the rabbit skin glue underneath the canvas and the rabbit skin glue on top of the canvas sort of bind together and create a sort of glue uh, a sort of glued seal um, really makes it a, a solid structure to work on. Um, and then, uh, and then um, when that's done, I put a layer of oil primer. Um, well, I, I, when I say oil primer, I, I sort of make uh, my own concoction of, of, of lead white um, and uh, uh, calcium carbonate um, and when I put that calcium carbonate on uh, just it gives me a little when I put the calcium carbonate into the into the white into the lead white it gives me a little bit of a denser thicker um, sort of paint which I can then push into the weave of the canvas with a palette knife mm -hmm. and so that's what sort of creates the um, so I'm not I'm not just painting a thin layer of white because I find the tooth is too rough. 
what I'm doing is I'm pushing in with a palette knife the the paint and calcium carbonate into the into the into the painting, uh, and so it's pushing it into the weave of the canvas and creating a slightly nicer sort of texture to work a uh, surface to work on, um, and I do that a couple of times. I don't do too. I don't really sand down much, um, maybe once, um, but I don't really sand down too much, um, and then. Um, I try and uh, cover the canvas. Usually this, this is a bit darker than what I would normally uh, go for. Um, I would try and maybe make the, 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 the color a little bit lighter, um, but it's a mixture of raw umber and, and ivory black, um, which is basically makes this, sort of, this is slightly cooler as well because um, I'm, I'm experimenting at the moment with a slightly cooler ground. Um, but usually you make sort of a neutral gray and a little bit lighter than this. And, it, and, it, and, and with a piece of paper wrapped up in a ball, um, you sort of put, cover the pigment over the surface. I don't use any solvents. Um, I don't like using solvents in, in, in painting, not, not for anything anymore. I don't even use it for, um, for mediums. Or anything like that. I just use a little bit of oil the whole way through. If I'm if I'm doing if I'm doing if I'm glazing, um, I still only use oil really. And I but I just before I glaze, I make sure the painting is um, is very dry, uh, so I can sort of rub rub the glaze around a little bit. Um, that's all right. Are you okay? So the weather just got horrible on uh, Tuesday. Uh, yes, you're alive though, still living. <laughs> no, I <laughs> spent Monday, Tuesday just on the Venus. Oh. Got signed off and then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stuck with my third one now. Yeah, yeah. Great. That's good. That's the. Sit there. The bugs. We're talking about the bug, the the bug drawings, uh, yeah. which are uh, fierce, <laughs> fiercely, fiercely. Uh, so how many months you spend on a bug drawing? Oh, you can you can spend. A whole term. Yeah, a whole term. So what's that? Three, just th uh, three, three. Two months. Two, yeah, three. Well, a whole term is, yeah, a whole term is 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 eleven weeks. So that's yeah. So yeah, yeah. Basically, just just, just under spend, three months. Yeah. Spend nine on the first one. <laughs> <laughs> they are. I I I tell. You, I, it, I don't know whether you're saying this on camera, but I I I, I find I find I, I I found them very useful, but I actually found them far more useful as a lesson in patience, um, which is what is 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 I think, ninety percent of people's problems, um, in painting. Yes. Is they don't have, uh, in in painting and drawing and anything to do with art. People just don't have patience anymore um, uh, to. They get frustrated before before the painting's even you know halfway through, um, and it's it's one it's one thing that you sort of learn as you as you paint more in in life is to never you never. You always try never to leave a painting in a bad in a bad way before you go to sleep or other because it, it drives you mad um always consistently thinking about the painting that you've got to then fix but um you always try and sort of you know not not uh you learn to not get frustrated with something you learn as you as you, as you get further through that everything is sort of fixable um which is why it's important to stay, you know, to, to hover a little bit in this stage until it feels right, because then, you know, then it, it, you sort of, there, there's a, there's a, as, you, as you learn more about the process and you get more comfortable with the process, you realise that it's, more, it, it's a lot more fluid and movable than, than it is. But most people sort of go a little bit too far in certain stages beyond repair. Uh, so that's why sometimes it gets a little bit tricky, but... Anyway, um, yeah, but I, I, I don't envy you doing bargs at the moment. It's, it's not, not. So now you're starting to apply some colour? Right, yeah, so I, I've got a very basic, so what, what you'll see now is what I'm doing is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start, um, 
I, I, we see your ballad first. Yeah, sure. So I can I can do a little explanation of this. Yes, so what yes. I so this is this is my starting palette. Okay, so I introduce more colours further through the process. Okay, um, like eventually I'll have a blue, um, a transparent a transparent red oxide, um, another yellow as well. But th this this is my what well, it's, it's sort of it's what I call sort of dead colouring. So it's it's to get a generic flesh okay. palette. And it's, it's, it's what's called a limited palette. So it's, it's lead white, yellow ochre, uh, vermilion, and ivory black. Mm. And that's it. Uh, and then I mix the yellow and red together to get this orange, which is a sort of neutral orange. Mm -hmm. um, so what, what this is for is, what, what I'm mixing here is just a generic flesh palette. So I, can, I mix this up every time I start a painting uh, at this stage from the beginning, okay? So it's, it's, it's a generic flesh palette. So you can see it sort of goes from lighter to darker. These have no white in, these are my shadows. So these have no white. Mm -hmm. This is sort of a middle value. Yeah. And then these are my, what we say, my lights. Okay. So this is what I paint into the lights. And with this, what I can get is sort of a dead coloured, which means sort of a, a, a lacking in, in colour, but a very fleshy through, through sort of black and white scale, through value and through sort of mute, slightly uh, muted colouring. Okay. Um, I can get a whole sense of the drawing and the values and then think about the colouring a bit later on. Okay. So that's sort of the idea is it's sort of, it's a palette that allows me to touch upon everything that I can do with colour and introduce colour, but not get confused by it, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and so the way, and actually it works, it works quite a lot on the colour theory of, of, of um, com complementary colours, right? So <clears throat> the idea is, this is, this is a generic, very generic sort of flesh colour, okay? So with this orange, I'm mixing, I'm mixing the yellow and red together to make an orange. In, in, in the colour wheel, the complementary of, or, of orange is blue. Mm -hmm. And the black we use has a blue, it's what we say has, what we say has, a, has, a, blue, has a blue bias. <laughs> we all good? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it has, has, a, has a blue bias, right? So the black we use has a blue bias. So when you add white to it, 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 it leans onto the colder side of, of grey. It's more of a bluish grey. So when you mix that with the orange, it complements it and neutralizes the intensity of the orange, right? Because okay. two complementaries mixed together become gray, yeah. right? So they remove each other's color. Mm. So I mix up the white and the orange to create my, my, uh, uh, my sort of, um, my initial mixtures. So I sort of, I take this, this orange and I take this white and I mix it up like that. And when you see that, you'll see that that's far too orange for a, for a, uh, for a flesh, right? So I'll mix in a little bit of the, of the gray and then it becomes more like a flesh color. Now, if I do it over here, cause the light's hitting. So if I have this sort of orange here, right? So that, say I'm mixing that up as a flesh colour, that's too orange for a flesh, right? It looks, looks far too orange. So if I take a little bit of the grey and I mix this in, mm -hmm. then suddenly it becomes a lot more of a, I can hardly see it, it becomes a lot more of a sort of flesh colour because it's removing the intensity of the orange mm -hmm. and creating more of a sort of a, a, a flesh, okay? hoping this light's not going to pass over into the painting but we'll see so when I when I start start when I'm trying to start figuring out values I work on this principle of sort of placing my um creating a sort of form but I always tend to start with the forehead um usually there's sort of a highlight or something um but I'm using the lighter so at, at the moment my lightest plane is sort of here okay so let's. So I'm just going to sort of put something in there that more or less feels sort of 
more or less sort of my lightest plane, okay? And then I'm gonna put something, what I do, what I sort of do is I think about, I think about my lightest light and my darkest dark. So where is, where is, my, where is my lightest and where is my darkest, excluding the highlight. So I'm thinking in terms of the forms, where is the lightest and where is the darkest? Um, so, so under the nose, so probably sort of, you know, it, it, this is gonna, this will be moved, but that, that'll be sort of my darkest and my lightest. So everything falls uh, in between, in between those two, those two points, okay? So that's sort of the idea. Um, And as I'm sort of placing in, what I start to do now is I start to basically put in, I'm not too, oh, that's way too strong, that color. I think, even, I think I've mixed these colors a bit too strong as well. You have to be careful of that because my, because my, because my painting is, uh, because my, um, because my uh, canvas is quite cold, um, these colors look a lot more intense than they actually are. They look a lot more strong than they actually are, but they are probably a little too colorful, but we'll, we'll, we'll worry about that a little bit later. So what I'm putting down now is just, um, what, do I, what, what, what I would say is sort of, uh, is, is um, paint that I mix, that, that uh, a paint layer that um, I can build more paint into. So it's sort of giving me a, um, a layer of wet paint to, to, to sort of play with. Mm -hmm. And I usually try and make that a little bit um, on the darker side so I can build up, um, I can build sort of up from it. I can build the lights up from it. Um, And I just roughly block it in. I'm a little bit conscious at, at this at this time of just sort of placing around it around edges that are going to be soft, just placing something a little bit darker. Um, so I'm I'm sort of building something um, uh, I'm building a sort of base in which I can I can work into. So it sort of it sort of provides me with a middle value in a way in which I can um, build the shadows into and build the lights into. So it all sort of so I, I tend to sort of put something a little bit on the darker side and just sort of go around. Um, so you can call this like a uh, I mean not exactly an underpainting stage, but like an underpainting with like muted colors. Yeah. So that on top of which you build up those. Yeah, I would say I would say like it's sort of it's a basic it's a basic uh, it's 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 my first uh, understanding of of sort of simple color, mm -hmm. and it's my first uh, understanding of sort of value introduction, mm -hmm. but it's mainly you know all, everything that I'm putting down will change. So everything, everything that comes, and you can see how sort of liberally I'm putting it down. I'm not, I'm not overthinking, overthinking it too much. Um, ooh, that's very strong. Um, at the moment, what I'm really just concerned with is just sort of placing something that gives me just a bit of a sense of light as well, really. Um, and I'm just I'm just putting that over the drawing again. I'm not I'm not too worried about um, I'm not too worried about I'm conscious of where I'm placing it, but I'm still keeping it as loose as the drawing underneath. I'm not trying to do too much with it until uh, until I have the until I have the painting covered. Um, Majority of it, you just still keep it flexible even at this stage. Oh yeah, absolutely. Everything, everything is 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 movable. Um, it's 
you know, really like that initial drawing stage is, is, is it's almost like, a, I mean, I could go straight, straight into this, this stage quite comfortably. Um, I wouldn't have much of a problem with just going straight into this, into this stage if I, um, you know, if, 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 if I wanted to. Um, but some, it, it, in a sort of nice way, you know, the stage before just gives me a little bit of a comfort um, that I'm sort of I at least in the right, in the right place. Um, like I'm in, I'm in the right, I've got a, I've got a, 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 a slightly sort of, um, sort of basic ground in which to work on. Um, and then this just gives me, uh, and then as I'm putting this, these colors in, you know, as I said before, the more you, the more closer you get to nature, the more you see the mistakes. So you're, you're, you're going to start realizing around now that there are things in that initial stage that weren't quite right. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll pick up on those, I'm sure in a minute. Um, you're also correcting the drawing when you put in the Yeah. Yeah, like I mean, yeah, I mean, once I've put down this sort of this this initial stage, once I put down this initial stage, I uh, I want to I want to get paint down on the canvas um, to be able then to to move it around. So this this uh, I'm being quite loose as I am, and and just sort of fi almost filling in the drawing I have underneath. Because I um, because I want it covered first, so I can clearly see what the drawing is telling me uh, underneath. Sort of bring by bringing it to the next stage, I'm I can see more clearly what the drawing is telling me underneath, uh, and what the drawing is saying because I've got some more information down. Then I'll start making these sort of slightly more uh, slightly slightly bigger uh, adjustments and. And variations, but this this is very much just a stage of sort of just putting putting something down to um, to see how it looks to see how it looks with a slightly more slightly more information on. Um, and is there any uh, fixed number of layers that you would try finishing the painting in? Uh, not no no as many as it takes. Usually usually. Uh, after about sort of three days of the process, um, I've got enough paint down um, that I start um, I start to ref refine the paint that's just already there. So it's it's like um, it, it's it's like so so once once I've got you know and I'm painting quite thickly I'm quite. Um, once I've got sort of enough paint down and it's starting to dry and everything's sort of dry, um, then I'll go back in and sort of refine the drawing more and more, uh, but with, in a way with actual thinner paint. I don't, I, I, a lot of the texture that I build up in the painting actually happens in the, in the initial stages. And then a lot of the sort of final painting actually is just sort of, um, with a mind of fixing, fixing the drawing. Um, it's just sort of sort of perfect, perfecting sort of drawing mistakes, you know, but on a, not as liberally as this, uh, you know, when, when I'm sort of on the fourth or fifth day of painting, it, it becomes, um, you know, the mistakes are a lot more sort of uh, grand, um, uh, smaller, they're a lot sort of smaller. The, at this stage, you know, there's a lot of fixing and moving around to do. Um, so the the... The answer to how many layers there are in a painting is until it, until the drawing, you know, for me, what I have in my, what I think in my head is until the drawing, until it, until you've got everything out of the painting that you feel that you want. Um, but I'm, I'm forever making, making adjustments. Um, yeah, for, forever making adjustments um, to the painting. Uh, I've been watching you. You've been mm -hmm. suddenly keeping your hand across <coughs> to see. So, I is that to check the drawing, or is it to check 
the no, no. For, for, for for what to to when I'm doing that. Yeah, you, you just keep your hand. Oh, oh, when oh yeah, I did that. Yeah, I just to just to see like, it, 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 there's there's something at this stage that isn't 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 me, <laughs> and I'm just seeing. I do I do that occasionally to say like, okay, is it is it is it the nose? Is it the eyes? Is it the mouth? Oh, yeah. Um, I I do I I do again. We, we're we're at such an early early stage. I I still don't. Um, I don't think about it all that much. Um, I always I'm always checking something. Um, and and sort of repositioning myself and making sure. Um, Checking certain certain things. Um, there's there, there's never a point where I stop to sort of check uh, proportional 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 sort of errors. Um, but still, at the moment, I'm very much just sort of putting things in. Um, I mean, so the sort of in a way, sort of when I when I'm when I'm Painting, I, it, it's, it's it, for a long time. There's, there's almost, it, 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 I mean, it's sort of subconscious to me now. But it's, it, it, it doesn't feel like there's, you know, sort of a process strictly, um, and like sort of speaking it out. Um, speaking it out, it doesn't often. It, it, it makes me realise that there is very much a process to it, but often it's it's, it's I'm very much sort of just um, going through a very sort of uh, common process in my head, which is the thing that's important really because it's 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 like it's like developing. And this is what these sort of schools are, in a way are training you to do is that they're, they're training you to they're, they're trying to give you a process, um, and you sort of follow that process and you can deviate from that process, but. I still very much use the same process that I, I was trained with and used, um, you know, many, well, for, for what was it now, for, uh, sort of eight years ago. So I still use that same sort of process. It's just my ending development is different. My end, my end goal is, 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 uh, is different for what the paint, the aesthetic of the painting, um, which, is, which should be the case for everybody. Um, but I think that's sort of the, that's sort of the thing. Um, that we mo we mo most need to sort of understand. Let's just get that in there. Um, is that the familiarity of a process actually gives you a lot more um, freedom <laughs> in the end um, because you get you get you get so used to doing that process that in this initial stage it becomes second nature. And then the sort of interesting bits, the exciting bits that everyone like everyone likes to do at the end of the painting, that's when it becomes unique. Um, that's when it becomes something something a lot more sort of u unique to you. Um, you know, there are many 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 people that start off a painting in 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 this sort of way. Um, so basically, like it's not about how you start but how you end it. Like to get that uh, in a way, in a way, yeah. I mean, I think so, yeah. I mean, it's it's about how you go through the, the process, but it's it's sort of. I, I think a lot of it comes from that, yeah. I mean, I think I think a lot of it comes from that. Um, yeah, yeah. Let's let's say sort of process and. Uh, I mean, every. every you know, every painter has their own slight variation of the process. But, uh, I mean, if you take, for example, you know, what makes the difference between, um, uh, sort of, um, you know, Sergeant and Zorn, let's say. It's like, well, you know, they both sort of paint in a similar way, but their mark making is, is very, is very different. And I don't think there's very much of my, sort of mark making in this part. It sort of builds and arrives at that. Yeah. 
but it's not it's not conscious it's not what I'm consciously thinking of at this stage it's something that I'm more um, you know I'm conscious of sort of of, of uh, drawing and process at this moment uh, in time um, conscious of drawing and uh, and sort of value and lightness and, and things like that um, just getting a, a feeling that where I am is the right direction um, and then it sort of it just so happens that that I build but the process is very similar to many many painters um, until I mean the glazing then the glazing starts to when I when I get into glazing that starts to, to differ a little bit but but even, you know, sort of learning the basics of glazing techniques firstly, and then... Uh, um, firstly, I adopted like a very standard idea for what glazing should be. And then I started using like my own <laughs> completely like different way of, of sort of sort of glazing and sort of playing with 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 I mean when I when I do sort of a painting over a long period of time I'm pay, I'm playing with a lot of uh, different sort of techniques that I've spent a long time sort of uh, getting wrong <laughs> in essence uh, like I, I really sort of play with with a lot of that um, It takes it takes a lot of time to sort of develop your own sort of techniques for things things that you I mean like I, I I had a series of paintings a few years ago where I just trying out a new medium and and uh, um, oh I should I shouldn't say that <laughs> and a few of them didn't work out so well I had to I had to I had to throw them throw them away. Um, because the, all the painting started to crack from the glaze that I was putting on. What do you use? Uh, now I just use oil. When I, what I used then was, was a concoction of uh, several, several horrible things. Um, well, like I, I used like a concoction of sort of varnish, turpentine, um, but I wasn't very careful with my mixture. I sort of just throw them all in, in and see what happened. Um, but it, that's the interesting thing is part, part of that. I mean, it's, again, it's another reason why I do sort of self portraits as well in a way, um, because I, they are it, aside from sort of painting them because of, um, I don't know, psychological reasons or whatever you, I, I enjoy painting them just purely as a practice, uh, and an experiment. Yeah. I, 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 I mean, people say I do, I, I do a lot of, a lot of self portraits. Um, they, 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 they've only seen the ones that I, I post they haven't seen the ones that I've thrown away and there's probably a double that I, the double that I don't I don't you know that I don't show to anybody um, and that's that's sort of the you know the thought process behind it in a way is sort of I'm very you know I'm very much I, st I still <laughs> in a weird way still consider myself a, a uh, uh, sort of very much in that experimental stage of painting. Um, like I don't consider myself someone who's, who's uh, by any means reached uh, a reached my my goal of 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 the aesthetic that I want or anything like that. So it's it's like it's like I'm very much in that stage of just sort of. You know, in a way, like anybody else, like any student of art, you know, it's just I'm still very much in that sort of opening. Like some say that learning is a process of knowing what not to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what to do. Absolutely is. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. It absolutely. Doing self portraits <laughs> gives you the freedom of experimenting as well as not being actually accountable to the yeah. model or anybody. <laughs> Uh, right, yeah, ex exactly that, exactly that. Um, it, it's uh, actually that 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 is exactly it. <laughs> so, and uh, uh, like a 
Yeah, but tell me how many self portraits have you done till date? Have you ever kept a count? Oh, I haven't kept a count, but it it would it it uh, <laughs> uh well I started really doing them, you know, not not a huge amount of time ago. I mean they 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 there there are more I do more and more of them these days than I than I did say in the first sort of five years. But I probably including the ones that I I've never shown to people or I've thrown away. Um sixty. Wow. More or less. Um and that, that would be in, in a time span of only about 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 five years. Okay. So it's more or less one a month. Yeah. Uh, if 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 not if not more, uh, <laughs> actually thinking about that, idea, I mean, yeah, uh, more or less sort of one a month I would say. Um, only in oils or have you tried like? No, I, I yeah. Oh um uh, no, I did I did those etching ones think, not yeah, so yeah. long ago. Um, uh, yeah, I did did those etching ones not so long ago, and um, and. Uh, and I've done some drawings as well, um, but nothing, yeah, n nothing, nothing in any other sort of medium, paint mediums. Um, I always, think, I always think it's like, it takes so long to master just one medium. It's, it's, it's incredibly difficult to sort of get into anything else really. Um, I really find it very difficult to sort of start you know, get, get, even even try. I mean, you know, I'd love to, I'd love to do do some things with watercolor, but I just but, you know, it's it's just it's just another another medium <laughs> that I just you know. So I, I it's, in my mind, you know, I'm not even close to what I want to achieve in paint yet. Um, not not even not even close. So it's 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 so. Uh, so difficult to sort of um, start even uh, in, in in oil paint. It's so so difficult to even start thinking about any other medium. I don't know how they did it in in you know in certain years. I mean, even in the, in the nineteenth century, I just don't know how they. Some of the these painters were just masters of everything. They're incredible painters. Masters, of, you know, masters of etching, masters of watercolor. Uh, you know, and you sort of you can learn a, a little bit of everything from all of them actually. But you know, even, even if they're watercolors, there's a great watercolor painter, and I, I is is uh, and also, um, uh, and and also oil painter uh, Mariano Fortuny, also yeah. a really amazing etcher as well. Yeah, his paintings are so good. Yeah, and his his watercolors. I mean, for me, they they look like they look like oil paintings. The 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 value control on them is so good. Anyway, um, <laughs> back to back to the back to this. Um, so what what you can see now is I'm sort of I'm using everything I've got. So the the what 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 I'm doing at the moment is I'm using sort of a process of um, interesting, sort of drawing value, drawing value, drawing value. So the more the so the more color I put down, the more drawing I put down. Um, to the, yeah, so, so sorry, the, the more color or the more value that I start to put down, um, the more I start taking a look at the drawing. So it sort of goes in stages. So first attempt at drawing, put value down, start drawing back into that and rearranging that again and starting to, starting to improve the drawing more, then again and again and again. So then after I sort of finish this stage, we are gonna get this cut in half a minute. Um, once I finish this stage, um, I've sort of, improving the drawing I'll then put more of a sense of value down and then go back into that again and start drawing and drawing so at this moment it's like I'm putting notes of value to myself like you're seeing here and I'm also just sort of improving the drawing so you see I'm looking I'm taking my first pass at really uh, designing the the eye really designing the shape of that and really design so this is this is sort of where it starts to take um shape as a, a take 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 this is this is sort of the stage where it really starts to become uh me more organic, 
Yeah, exactly. So it's my it's, and if if you think about it like that in terms of stages, in terms of passes, so you're 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 always making a pass at the painting at any one time. Um, so you're doing one. You're always making sort of movements. You're making sort of. Uh, decisions based on the stage of the painting that you're at. So you're making drawing decisions based on the value decisions and you're making value decisions based on the drawing stage. And this is how you keep the process controlled because at any one stage, you're, you're always just giving yourself the information that you need um, to take the drawing further. You're giving yourself the values you need to take the drawing further and you're giving yourself the drawing that you need to take the values further. So it's always this process of building slowly. <clears throat> and at each stage, always just asking yourself what you want, what you need, um, and, and also what you want. Um, so. so at what stage do you start yeah, take a break. So cool, uh, warm, warm lights, cool half tone and warm shadows okay and so if i actually if i actually put uh, if i actually start putting this on the on the painting as well what you'll see is if i start putting this in where it should be you'll see how cool that is it's not you don't want to go crazy you don't want to make it bright blue or anything but you can see that 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 and that are both very much warmer than that yeah so it's sort of that idea. Um, uh, that, okay, so let's just get this. So at this moment, I'm just gonna start putting in, um, it's good that you mentioned that because I'm gonna start putting in the half tones now. Um, so I, again, I'm sort of creating this form uh, that's running through the painting. I'm just putting little notes of where the half tones would exist or exist. Um. It's a little bit what I was searching for before when I, uh, sorry, this light is very irritating. Um, it's sort of what I was searching for before when I was putting down the, uh, the, uh, the initial sort of stay. I was going quite dark with it. That's sort of the, the values of the, um, of the half tone. Uh, and now I'm just gonna take a look at the drawing again. There's something I don't quite like about the angle of that. That's a bit better. So, okay, I'm just putting a bit more of an indication. So you can see sort of things are starting to build a little bit now. Mm -hmm. um, It's very irritating. I wasn't. I wasn't expecting it to come. It's because it's such a. Yeah, it's such a bright day. Usually, I mean, this is usually. Three days it was. Uh, rainy. Yeah, it's terrible. Today it is really sunny. Yeah, it's a lot hotter today as well. I can feel it as well. I mean, mainly because I can feel the sun. I think ever since I've come today, I'm actually seeing sun. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. It's sort of, it's always, always happens when, uh, yeah, this is sort of the, the downfall of this, this studio space. It's going to be a lot better in, uh, 
in the, in the future one. But so. Just uh, always checking sort of my, my face at them at any one moment. Just checking that I'm drawing from something I want to do. Is it because you've been into teaching that you're able to word out every process? Otherwise I've noticed artists fail to word out the process. <laughs> um, <coughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, I, I quite often get stuck <laughs> uh, sometimes when I'm when I'm talking. Um, now I I think um, that being too crude. Uh, when I was a kid, my dad always said that I had verbal diarrhea, uh, which <laughs> um, yeah, I could never shut up. Um, but no, I mean it's sort of it's like for for me it's like uh, I, I I sort of always. As I like, I, I don't know. I don't know. Feel, I sometimes I just feel silence. <laughs> but uh, but no. I mean, it's it's just it's just to convey. It's it's good to sort of convey. I, I'm, I'm glad you said that because I mean sometimes I get lost a little bit in in my wording or my thought, um, and that 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 happens quite a lot. Um, and sometimes I find it difficult to process. Varad knows because when I was teaching him, like sometimes I find it difficult to actually get get out what I mean to say in any one thing. Um, but, I mean, like critiquing in, in a school, like so, sometimes I feel like I wish I had sort of my painting in front of me. It's a lot easier to, to spell out what, what I'm doing when I have something in front of me than, than, um, than it is to sort of sometimes talk about students' work. So it's sort of, it's a bit of, a bit of evidence. So at, at this stage, I'm just gonna run a, run a fan brush across it. And this will just pick up any sort of oil on the surface a little bit as well. And also just uh, help a little bit with the glare as well. Um, but it's just, it's, it's to smooth some of the edges, um, to smooth some of the edges over and, uh, oh, there's a bit of a glare going on here, sorry, excuse me. Yeah, so it's just how how is that coming it's out? Fine. On the, is it fine? fine? It's getting it's, okay. Um, getting a little bit of glare on the painting, which is a bit of a problem. Oh, sorry, yeah. it's just you can you can edit all this bit out. Hopefully, yeah. There we go. Right. You might see me do this a little bit until the sun goes, just so I can see it. So. This is just to sort of smooth some of the edges off and just remove some of that thick paint um, that I don't particularly need at the moment, um, just until the drawing is becoming more correct. Um, okay. So, and I've got that. When I do that, I start sort of taking a, a dry brush without any paint on it. And I start just going into the edges again. So it's it's quite useful having this having a dry brush because it it just gives you that um, control that you need uh, without paint, um, just to sort of soften some edges. So again, sort of edges are sort of part of drawing in a way. So it's sort of it's it's. Um, if I just move myself a little, bit, that's good. So when I'm looking at edges, I'm looking at sort of values that are close together, and asking myself which edges at this stage of the painting I can sort of 
soften or eliminate and also which uh, edges I can sort of draw a little bit better. So yeah, so I'm just sort of removing, basically just drawing back into the painting again, uh, but just with with using the using the paint that's on the on the painting, and just working with that. this <laughs> yeah of course the uh, it's a bit, is it? the, the glare the glare of the glare on the painting is causing me to, yeah let's just adjust a little bit again sorry let's start introducing slightly lighter value so I'm sort of working I'm taking so I've, I've sort of this is sort of my first pass as it were um, and I'm going to start just building back into this with some slightly more accurate values a little bit softer as well and then looking a little bit of color so now I'm sort of using my palette a little bit more in terms of color I'm just building into that Another thing that's sort of important to, to realize is that I'm using sort of a lot of brushes um, <clears throat> and each brush has a different, a different value on it. So the, the, the sort of the point of that is that my brushes always, always stay clean or they always stay sort of with the correct uh, value on them mm -hmm. or the correct, the correct coloring. Uh, because it, it's sort of the reason, the reason for that is that then I don't get my my brushes uh, don't get don't get confused. Um, I keep sort of a clean a cleanliness to the to the paint. Um, there we go, that's a bit better. Let me just start using. So as I'm as I'm sort of going back into the painting, uh, I'm using the edges um, in a way. I'm using the edges to sort of feel my way around the values, which is to say that. Um, as I'm sort of painting into the, uh, I just say so. If I if I'm if I'm painting into the, uh, if I'm looking at sort of between here and here, I'm looking at the 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 edges between sort of 
between the shapes and the forms and using how hard or soft that edge appears to realize what the the correct value should be for that so it's sort of it's it's using using edges to decide <clears throat> what uh what value what value i need but the um the important thing at this pros at this point is just again it's it's this idea of the more values you put in the more you're starting to think about the edges the more you're starting to see the um the mistakes in the drawing and the more it starts to sort of take shape um, Rembrandt, yeah, yeah definitely. Any other else you've been um, looking up to? Almost certainly, um, Mancini okay. is one. Not necessarily for, for technique, although I am obsessed with him. Um, Antonio Mancini is he, he's done a lot of self portraits that are really um, quite remarkable <clears throat> in their in their sort of feeling and the um, the way that they. The, the way that they sort of give an insight, for me, it's the way that they insight. I mean, he was, he was sort of a, um, he was a, a 19th century painter that was, um, should we say, a little bit mentally unstable um, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a guy. And uh, there's something in his portraits that sort of, that sort of give an impression of that, actually, which is quite amazing. Um, He's def I mean, in terms of any of his paintings, he's definitely someone that I would spend a lot of time looking at um, or researching. There we go. There's a bit of light on there. Um, it's some sometimes I sort of I'm just readdressing the sort of um, reorganizing my values a little bit, just sort of putting something a little bit brighter on, seeing seeing how that feels. As I was saying before, usually I sort of build up in value and so that's that's sort of where what i was what i what i sort of start to do at anywhere any any point through the process but I, I start to sort of build up and build down um start getting a little darker start getting a little lighter um What I what I tend to think about when I'm uh, when I'm doing these uh, when when I'm at this beginning stage of the painting is what what I what I tend to think about is sort of how um, how I'm setting myself up for the next the next stages. So all of this is sort of almost you know for the first day this is almost sort of preparatory work. Um, it's me sort of. making assessments of what I what I need to uh, do either either through color or through or through uh, or value or anything like that I'm sort of preparing myself for the next stages um, um, and that can come in many forms I mean it, it can be like I'm doing now just putting little little notes to myself of of, of areas that are a little bit sharper um there we go and so at the moment i'm not I, i'm still not i'm thinking a little bit about color like okay so i want some more reds around the cheeks and the nose i want it to be more yellow along the forehead but i'm not thinking too much, ooh, 
too much about, about, uh, about the colouring. I'm just thinking about how I get that sense of form. Uh, how, I get, how I get it to feel like, one, there is light hitting me, and two, that there is a, um, uh, that there is, that there is a, a sense of, of, of draftsmanship. I mean, if you, can, if you can get the sort of the, the draftsmanship, the, you know, as much as you can of sort of the drawing locked in place uh, at this stage, it becomes a lot, uh, a lot easier to sort of work, uh, to, to sort of, um, in the later <coughs> stages, it becomes sort of a, a process of, uh, it's, it's sort of that idea that, you know, the, the less you have to worry about, the more, the more, the, uh, the more you can focus on sort of the things that make it, uh, your, make it more personal. Um, these sort of things. So <clears throat> the idea is, you know, big impression, but big accurate impression. Yeah. And then it's a, it's a process of general to specific. So sort of working general to specific is sort of uh, the best way of explaining it. You're sort of working with this idea that um, everything you're doing is preparing yourself for the next stage. And whilst you're doing that, you're getting more and more specific with the drawing from, if you remember how it started out, it started out very generalized. And then it's sort of getting into like a much more sort of specific, uh, specific design. Um, So even even just coming back to redrawing that line, it it helps just change sort of what the face is doing, what the face is telling me. It's giving getting me that little bit more accurate um, accurate information to what I'm seeing. Sometimes, I mean, e even at this stage, like sometimes I will. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's not always sort of a great idea, but I'll put <coughs> just a sort of feeling of the highlights on, on the, on the eyes, just to see, again, sort of like a clearer, clearer idea of sort of how the values feel to me, how they feel when I, you know, how does that eye feel in terms of form? When I put that highlight on, do I feel like I've got something there? more or less for sure the 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 uh the highlights will uh will be removed and put down again at another point in time but it's just it's 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 like I was saying at the drawing stage as well it's like put something down to see how it feels to see to 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 know if you're in in <laughs> in the right place or not um So it's it's always it's using it's using a combination of all of these things. Um, <clears throat> I'm not. I mean, it's 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 sort of there is a method behind it, but it's not. It's I'm not so methodical as a painter in the sense that there's not a sort of absolute definite process. It's 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 more. It's very much. I'm in the school of put down what you think. Uh, or what you need to help you see 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 the mistakes better, see the errors better. So, just as we as we, so this is what I mean when I'm saying that I'm thinking a little bit about colour. Is as I get to sort of the cheeks, I'm going to start just putting in something a little bit sort of rosier. Um, 
Yeah, at the moment, um, when when I come to sort of later later stages of the painting, um, I'll be I, I would use sort of um, different different reds depending on depending on what you know. Sometimes it could be a, a crimson, yeah. or sometimes it will be a rose madder or things like that. But it's it's just you know it's like a foundation for for the coloring that I want at the moment. That's that's sort of that's sort of where it's at. As a general rule of thumb uh, for portraits, it's sort of uh, logical as well in this sense is the, where there's more flesh, um, where there's more flesh, i.e. the cheeks, um, there is uh, more red. Mm -hmm. So this idea that sort of through here where we've got a little bit more flesh, there's a little bit more red through there, there's red in the cheeks. And then also, not quite the case, but the only the only sort of um, thing against that, I guess, is 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 at the end is is the nose, because you've got so many sort of little capillaries and things um, in in the end of your nose. So it that's that's where the redness comes from. But it's a different sort of red as well. It's a far more sort of orange red through there than the sort of than through here. These sort of pinky pinky moments. Um, another thing you might see me do a, a little bit as well is actually following following form so as I'm painting um, I do have a different approach to sort of painting beards as I do to to uh, especially for sort of this early on like I sort of I, I use different different parts of the brush um, so I'm sort of creating. It's not really. It's not really a bearded effect, but as it goes as it goes through the process of painting, it starts to sort of build up like that eventually. Um, but I'm just sort of. I'm always sort of following forms. Probably the best example is how you see it on the beard, as I'm sort of following following the forms of. Uh, following the movement it, it's it's interesting because everything you put even if it sort of ends up being covered funnily enough everything that you put underneath on a painting always always has a habit of appearing at the end of the painting so you have to think about these things um Another thing you'll notice I do is, uh, if you see a mistake, fix it. Don't leave a, <laughs> don't leave, have you heard that critique before? Um, it, it, I think it's very important to sort of move, move around the painting. Um, <clears throat> like never get stuck in one place. You'll see me do a little bit here, then come up here, then go to the eyes and come down to the nose. You'll always see me sort of do little 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 movements little moments all over the painting um one because it keeps you keeps keeps you feeling a little bit more engaged with the painting and it actually you know quite a lot of the time when people are painting and they struggle with an area that's when they start to get um flustered that's when they start to get start to get irritated um because they are staying in that one area and sort of the advice that I used to give to students about that is just it, it, try and blot it out of your head and move on, move on to the next the next area, um, because otherwise your frustration just grows and grows and grows and you 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 end up losing your uh, mind. Um, 
Is this something you would also recommend while you know when you're painting a portrait or like a figure and uh, you're not doing well in a certain area and you just can't get out of it, you know, you're just, you're just doing it and you're like, shit, it's not happening. Yeah. So would you recommend the same thing that you try going on to other areas and then come back to it? I say give it a healthy try. Okay, okay. And give it a healthy try. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah. And then move on. Yeah. <laughs> because if you... It, it, frustration is, is, is probably the most blinding uh, uh, emotion to creativity mm -hmm. or so to focus moving around the whole world basically yeah I mean like don't, I mean, don't give up too quickly but, <laughs> but, but try and try and uh, try and try and like maintain a focus um and and the problem is 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 exactly that you know like um it's why i was starting to get in a little bit of a panic about this this lighting hitting me because i was just really like because I, I i i know if i start getting frustrated with that i'm going to lose my focus for the painting and that's going to irritate me um so it's that it's that it's it's that thing where it's like frust frustration and it, it, it it just is so contradictory to, to focus. It really kills your focus. Um, and people will try and try and try thinking they're focused. But actually, you, you're not focused. You're, you, you, you're just focused at, you're focused um, in the fact that you're frustrated, not in the solving of the problem. So it's like you have to, you have to be you have to refocus yourself in solving the problem not not being um not being sort of focused in the frustration and it's really when you when you're first learning to paint and draw it really is so it's such a frustrating thing i mean if it was easy everyone would do it so it's sort of <laughs> it's that sort of it's that sort of thing it's like it's you know it's like uh you know you have to sort of prepare you have to sort of strap yourself in for the ride and accept that it's it's never going to be easy um painting and it's never going to be um so make it easier on yourself by not getting frustrated with things um and try. did you also uh like in your starting years when you started painting like self-portraits mm -hmm. like now from my experience i've seen people painting self-portraits at the academy mm -hmm. and it's kind of uh, like a fear that like you're painting yourself you know you're the <laughs> protagonist in the painting and everything so i've seen people do a bad job of the self-portrait because it was them like i saw their portraits which turned out real nice but when they're painting the self-portrait yeah. because it's themselves they're painting their own uh the the vibe or the things they're thinking through you know the expression they want to put in yeah and because it's painting yourself so you're kind of scared to paint yourself or make a good painting you have the pressure of making sure you're painting yourself good yeah has it ever happened to you or how did you, how did you <laughs> overcome that um I guess that depends on what <laughs> what level what level of an, yeah. of narcissism you, you you function at. Uh, um, it hasn't been a huge problem to me because I don't think I I don't think when I paint these I'm thinking uh, necessarily of the same same things that other people are thinking of. Um, I know what you mean. Like you said something there, like like people get you know saying like oh what emotion do I paint? Yeah, yeah. And I think you know it's like well just paint yourself okay, okay. Um, emotion always comes through yeah. um, I, it, it's like I was saying to you guys earlier about that idea that if you want to paint someone sad mm -hmm. and you make them just do a sad face or you say I want you to pull a sad face yeah. they don't look sad they look stupid mm -hmm. or something like that you know it's like because you know most most people don't um, most people you know it, it Emotion, emotion is so. If you there's a, there's a challenge I do quite often when you when you look at a Rembrandt self portrait, mm -hmm. and you say, oh that you know he he looks he looks sad in that or he looks happy in that or whatever. Cover up the the mouth and the nose and look at the eyes, mm -hmm. and then do the opposite. Cover up the eyes and look at the mouth, mm -hmm. and you'll often find that they sort of convey a completely different emotion. Um, and I find that super interesting because 
like I was saying before, like emotion doesn't come from just the eyes or just the nose or just the mouth. And when people, when you sort of force people into an emotion, um, y- y- you find that that they, uh, y- y- you can of course force people into an emotion and it and it work, but the, but you often find that people try to do it with one thing or two or, or one one part of their face or whatever that they attribute most to that that emotion but um i often i mean i i think it is that thing where it's like you, emotion is best best sort of left alone <laughs> um to do its own job um you see so many you know if someone has a sad face it's not, it's also not necessarily because they're sad um, it's a very difficult, challenging thing, emotion, but with self-portraits, you'll always find um, that someone has an opinion on it. Because um, emotion is also subjective. I mean, it's, it, you know, so many times you get, <laughs> sometimes people, people ask you and they'll go, you know, if you've, had, if you've had a rough few weeks or something and someone will say like, oh, um, are, you, are you okay? Like, yeah, I'm fine. Oh, and you look a bit sad. No, it's just because you think I'm sad. Yeah, it's like it's it's, it's sort of it, it's so it's so independent. So you know, people can look. You know, sometimes I look I, I look at a, a Rembrandt painting, you know, that I hadn't seen for a few years or something like that, and I think, why the hell did I think that before about it? It's so it's so subjective what what people think, um, what people think about uh, about emotion and and how it's perceived. Because you you mean to say that. Uh, uh the viewer's emotion will, uh, yeah. will uh, see those emotions in the portrait. I, I think a lot of a lot a lot of times that can happen for sure, and I think a lot of times, um, yeah, right, I- exactly that. And I think also a, a, a lot of times, like human emotion, isn't one, isn't isn't sing isn't isn't a singular. Uh, I think we're, humans are capable of, of conveying several different emotions at once. Um, especially if you're painting someone, I mean, this is the beauty of working from life, you see, because especially if you're painting someone over 30, 30 hours or something like that, I mean, that person, I mean, you're talking to them. Quite often you can be talking to them. And I mean, some people like to work in silence. Personally, if I'm painting someone um i like to talk to them um because uh because of that very factor is i get to know the person better and they convey me several different emotions you know we can be talking about you know an ex-boyfriend at one point or we can be having a having a laugh about uh about you know something they saw on television the other day or you know it's you go through a whole range of emotions and when you put that into a painting over several hours um, what you do is you get that sort of Rembrandt effect where it's like everybody, every every person can read a different emotion into it. And that for me is what makes a great portrait is it's not necessarily trying to convey just one emotion. It's, it's conveying several that lets the viewer make their own choice but then also um, In a, in a funny way, it's more human to convey more emotions. Usually if someone's sad about something, maybe they're also angry too. Uh, maybe they're also frustrated. You know, I mean, there's, there's so many different, different emotions that go into, into uh, a human's mind at any one point. Um, you know, I mean, uh, you know, we sort of say, okay, you know, we usually just sort of attribute these things to happiness and sadness. Well, you know, nervousness, awkwardness, um, you know, many, many things like that. So you get, you, you, there's so many different, different sort of forms of patterns of, or not patterns of behavior, but behavior, behavioral things to sort of capture. And if you, if you try to force it too much, you find that you're not, you're not going to capture any of it. Um, you know, another, another, thing that's quite nice while I'm talking to you is because I'm I'm is it's sort of like I'm I'm talking to it to a model which it because it's it's sort of 
it, it's sort of helpful. Um, but otherwise, a self-portrait is a lonely process. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you wouldn't be talking at that point of time. So yeah. in, the, the, in the process of painting, you're both subjective and objective simultaneously. Sure. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, sometimes it, I mean, actually, funny enough, I, I, I listen to, um, I never, I never really, music, because I also uh, sort of play classical piano and, and guitar and things, I never really listen to music because I find I, I get distracted too much. But a lot of people say, you know, sort of, you know, playing music can convey a, you know, can, can help convey a mood or a, or a feeling. I actually listen to sort of audio books and things like that, which, which also do uh, convey convey a, a, a sort of mood sometimes if it's very... But it will dilute your existing emotion. Can do. Can do. Um, can do, but I, f I actually find that sort of... It's, it, it's, it's all, you know, it's, it's all sort of... Um, it all comes in the end. I mean, that's exactly it, is I don't try and force it. It's, it's sort of... I, I never try and force... I mean, yeah, I mean, there's that self-portrait over there where I'm sort of sort of smiling sillily. Um, and that is, sort of, that is sort of conveying quite a strong emotion. Um, but it's, it's like that, that, that emotion is... Um, that emotion is a justified response to something I was thinking about anyway. So I set it up. Mm. That was... Um, that painting was... was painted for my uh just for funny well, i don't know whether i should really say but it was, it was just it was uh uh painted for, uh, this this has just been my sort of first month of sobriety without alcohol and uh i've just uh and so it's sort of it's sort of a little bit uh bless you uh it's sort of a little bit um sort of in in jest at that as it were it's sort of like a jest of uh of sort of um I don't, it's sort of a silly pose because it's sort of a, a sort of a sort of almost like a sort of drunk drunken sort of very much like these sort of Franz Howell things you get you know sort of that was the idea for it um, but it was in my mind anyway this sort of I wanted to paint myself sort of taking the mickey out of myself a little making making a joke out of myself for, you know uh, and it's sort of you know that's how it sort of came out I feel so it's sort of it's, it was sort of that that idea you know so you can convey an emotion as long as it's honest I think um I mean, I, I guess it's debatable as to as the you know the idea. I guess could be debatable in the sense that it's up to the artist to convey the emotion that they want. But it certainly helps um, if you're. Uh, it certainly <coughs> helps if, if 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 you're sort of feeling that way. You know, I don't try and force anything on people, um, or or on myself. I think it's too it's too it's too. I guess what I mean to say is there's there's a difference between forcing an emotion upon yourself and choosing to make a painting of yourself because you feel that way, if that, that makes sense. Um, it's like trapping... Uh, and I've done a lot, of, a lot of portraits like that, a lot of sort of silly, silly, silly paintings of myself like that. It's human, you know, it's human expression, like I... Like I, uh, you know, if I feel in a bit of a sort of mischievous mood, I might, I might paint myself. I mean, I, I, I painted myself in a jest one time of, of uh, sort of in jest of the Caravaggio painting of the, the boy bitten by the lizard, where he sort of does like this sort of, this sort of, <laughs> sort of weird like jokey sort of gesture, or sort of like, like you know, like he's just been bitten by. I just there was something I sort of felt a bit silly. It was a bit silly that painting. So um, it's a it's a beautiful painting, <laughs> very beautiful painting. Before people start having a go at me because I'm insulting Caravaggio, but um, uh, you know that that man is an absolute genius. I just always found that painting a little bit silly. Um, so I I sort of made that the point and sort of sort of indulged in its silliness, um, and then did a self portrait like that. I I, I actually, <laughs> funnily enough, I think I'm painting on top of that painting at the moment. 
or maybe it's on top of that one. But yeah, I'm sort of painting like painting on top of that at the moment. Um, anyway, so you sort of see now it's starting to it's starting to get to where it it, it needs to be. It's sort of starting to um, take shape. Um, and it always it's always like this. It's sort of get, it's, it's always a bit sort of shaky <laughs> until 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 sort of the final moments that it starts to pull together you know like quite easily i can see that uh that you know this has got way too big there so that comes in and it's little changes like that and this is what i mean by not getting frustrated with things is it's little changes like that that sometimes make the big difference because when people get frustrated they go they go oh god the nose is too big and they change everything and bit by bit you just need to sort of start and that people people don't act like that when they're frustrated with something. People get people people act uh, too like too drastically. They make rash decisions, um, and you very rarely find that you need to make rash decisions. Uh, again, it, it's it's like I was saying, it's part of the process, right? So the fact that I was making the best drawing I could make at that time in the earlier stages of painting means that I can make the with the values I have now, the best drawing I can make with the values I have now. So again, it's this process of general to specific, jumping between drawing and value. Um, and that's, that's sort of, that's, that's why it's sort of now it's only taking shape because I'm starting to do all the drawing issues that were creating these sort of little problems. And what you find that when people get most frustrated is when their values have jumped in front of uh, in front of their drawing, right? Mm -hmm. So if you start putting and all these draw all these values look great, you're getting closer to nature, but your drawing looks like a mess. So drawing by my, I mean sort of the the sense of design in the painting um, looks looks a mess. So people get frustrated and say, oh, the, the drawing's all wrong and I can't do it. And they start getting frustrated with the values they've put down. And actually quite often it's just they need to, like you were seeing I was doing before, is they need to just put the paint down and just take uh, a dry brush creating. And it's sort of finding the edges again. You know, and this is just a dry brush, but just even softening something. It just helps that little bit. So, you know, even edges can also just make drawing look, look wrong as well. So, it's, you know, there's so many things that you can do instead of just, I think that's one of the big mistakes. People just keep adding and adding and adding and adding, adding paint, expecting that the paint is going to do something, something more. Um, and this is this is this is something that I do all the time with uh, with paintings. I always use a dry brush, and usually at the end, towards the end of a painting, sort of well, ha once halfway through, and then towards the end of the painting, I just take my dry brush, and even if I lose a little bit of the value as a result of it, um, I'm 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 drawing. Uh, I, I'm, get, I'm getting the drawing closer to what I want, and that's sort of that's sort of the most important thing. In the end, if if the drawing is good, um, that does a hell of a lot of the work. Um, if the drawing is bad, I think there's so many painters that have, so many painters in history have said, uh, have, have made a very similar quote or quotes to to this to worse this effect that good painting is some it differs as to what different artists have said but but good painting is 90 percent drawing 75 percent drawing three quarters drawing um it's it's drawing and and getting a good drawing is everything um and i don't think enough people spend the time spend the time doing that or taking the time in their painting they, they rush too much ahead so this is this is my so as as I sort of say good, I mean I'm going to do a little bit more anyway. But but uh, seeing as we were talking about it, I'll do it. I'll do it now. But this is 
this is sort of what I do is sort of almost like a warm down after a hard workout. I just sort of take my dry brush and start start working into the into the into the painting. And even just, you know, taking things like like sort of looking at the forms of the of the eyebrow and just imitating the movement of that. It helps so much to just put the painting So you're softening and directing those informations in the direction you want them. Yeah, right, yeah. So ba it's basically, it, yeah, yeah, more or less. I mean, I'm, I'm sort of, I, I'm, I'm drawing is, 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 is the basic, yeah. But as a rule, uh, I'm not consciously thinking of softening things. I'm just looking at what needs to be done. Um, in terms of drawing, I sort of, it's sort of, it's like... <laughs> It's like painting is like multitasking, of which I'm not very good at. So I give myself different points during the day to work on different things. And so this is, this is, this is when I get, so now you'll see I'm picking up this brush again and just putting the value back in again uh, that, I, that I, I removed. So I'm sort of doing value drawing, value drawing, value drawing, as I said before, and going through that process. And allowing the painting to sacrifice a bit of value for an improvement in the drawing, because if I lose a bit of the bit of the value, I can just take my brush and apply that straight back in again. Um, so it's just it's just really a sort of. Uh, sort of control trick. I mean, there are painters, of course, that can do all this at the same, same time. And, but it, it's, it's, it's just, it happens to be the way that I work, which is just very sort of, okay, here, it's very matter of fact. Here's one, here, now I've got to do this, now I've got to do this, now I've got to do this. Um, and it's sort of, like I was saying again before as well, it's like sort of the process that I've developed in the sense that it's, it's the process derived from the Florence Academy, but this is the way that I find it comfortable to work in. And I think it is, in, in my opinion, it's sort of, it is sort of the most effective way to work because the quicker you get at this, um, this idea of always working between value and drawing, um, it's, it's, sort of, it's, sort of, it's sort of, in a way, it's sort of foolproof because you, you never really, uh, make make a mistake. You never really get stuck. Um, there are things that I'm thinking about as I'm sort of doing that you know and what this also gives me an opportunity to do is to look at the individual forms and ask ask myself if they if they feel three-dimensional because in, in, in the end this is the goal of the of the painting right I mean well I mean in the sense it's the it's the draftsman the the, the, the draftsmanship part of uh, goal of, of the painting is to if for it to feel like it has this nice sort of three-dimensional, like you can reach out and sort of grab my nose or whatever. Um, that's sort of the, the, the idea of the painting. So this gives me an opportunity to take sort of smaller areas and ask myself if at this point in time, these, these, these values are turning enough. Uh, these these forms are, are are turning enough. They're working enough. Um, and you can see if I put if I put sort of pure white here, you can that gives you a better ind indication of sort of what my values are like. Um, so that that's sort of where I would be uh, aiming to go uh, uh, later on in the painting. Um, 
it's very like I was saying before like sort of moving all around the painting is very difficult to to talk and rationalize your rationalize your movements through the uh, through the process because in in my mind it's it's sort of going okay here and I need to do a little bit here and then here and then here and here so it's very it's very difficult to sort of like think uh, out like give give um, give sort of sort of uh, sense to uh, to the process but that it is it is a process and it is a sort of it is a it is an I Uh, this is also sort of what I tend to do, um, like, as I was saying before, giving myself indications of where I need to go next in the painting. So like little notes about, little notes saying, okay, that's how light I've got. So let me see where else that value is and see if I can sort of apply it there as well. It's already quite light. Um, so I'm always sort of asking myself these things. Um, when we're talking about sort of sort of emotion and feeling and, and, and all these sort of things, I do I do believe that that's sort of that that's that's like I was saying before, it's like an ongoing uh, process. So it's like it's like you know day one is not going to convey the is not going to necessarily convey an emotion. Or feel like something, but day two it might start developing. You know, it's sort of the it, it's an ongoing process where you sort of start thinking about. Uh, I mean, I'm always conscious of how I'm feeling, especially if I especially if I'm painting, you know, on my own without without company in the room. I'm always conscious of of. I mean, it's, you know, my thought is in the painting and also uh, usually. Any financial problems that I have going at the time? Uh, no, I mean you know it's 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 lot. I mean lots of things you know go through your head at any one point in time. It's amazing how much you ever, actually if you ever if you ever just stop and think like how much, I you know sometimes we don't we sometimes don't even give ourselves a chance to breathe and we start we we say what how did I what did I you know I just thought about a hundred different things in in such a short amount of time. We find it very difficult to focus our our energy sometimes. It's actually that's it's actually quite a nice nice thing about painting is it's sort of when it stops becoming frustrating when it's when you when you when when you're a student it can be very frustrating when it stop when it when it stops that when that frustration stops it's it's like you lose four hours of your day uh, or or however long you paint for. It's like you lose all of that, all of that time. It's a real form of escapism. In fact, it's 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 the only form of escapism that I that I sort of have really. Um, I mean, music, yes, but like this, it's really like I, it's just me and the, you know, I don't have to check my phone. I don't have to think about anything. I just it doesn't matter if someone incredibly important is ringing me. I I just it's uh, this is this is sort of my time, you know. And that's 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 genuinely genuinely one of the nicest things about painting is it sort of you you relax into it. It's very therapeutic. Unless you're stressed, as you as you would as you would be when you're learning or when you're trained being tra training, um, especially if you're doing the bogs. <laughs> Hmm? <laughs> uh, I, I mean, they'd probably say the same thing, to be honest. Uh, no, as I, as I said before, they're very useful, useful things to learn. They're just... Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're, well, they're... they're like I said, like they 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 they're very they're they're deceptively useful because they because they they're training you on um, they're training you on patience, um, like 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 I'm sort of displaying here, like you know, probably probably about half an hour ago I could have 
I, I, I didn't want to say anything, but I sort of thought, oh God, this is this is going in a in a in a in a in a in a, in a strange direction. Um, but you see how quickly you know if you don't if you with patience, which is what the bugs I think teach you the most. Uh, with the patience, you 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 really learn how to control painting, and that's the uh, that's the biggest thing about them. Um, it's, the, it's, 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 it's you know, and that that is that is the greatest. Um, I, I would have to say, you know, aside from all the practical training that I received at the Florence Academy, I have to say that the 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 biggest lesson I had was impatience throughout the whole process, and you know the teachers were quite good at at, at, at sort of um, you know explaining that or at least helping with it, but I think it's the it's 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 genuinely you know aside from the acad the, the academic training it is the, the 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 biggest thing I learned um, just to just to breathe and like not try and race not try and get everything done in five minutes. Um, I always, I always sort of think that sort of painting is a pleasure that very few people have the opportunity to, or the time to become become professional at or good at, and uh, however long that takes, it's a it's a privilege. Uh, it's a real privilege to have that. So it, it's sort of. Um, again, not financially, but it is <laughs> prepare. Uh, I would I would say on that front, when you graduate, go on a go on. A, what, what I did was I, I went on a big mission to uh, uh, find as many commissions as I could straight away, and build up a bit of money. Um, it's a good 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 rule of thumb. Is commission routes are great. Galleries galleries won't tend to be that interested in your academic academic work um, but you know and then don't stop painting just find any avenue you can even if you have to you know get a part-time job or whatever but always keep keep painting never stop um, it's another another reason why I do do so many of these it's because you should never you should never really stop it's like engaging your curiosity it's like you should never, you know, if you can't afford models or you don't have the, the, the time or, or whatever, you know, you, there's always time on us, you know, to, to sit down and, and paint a self-portrait. And then you're, you're never, you're, you know, the, the, the big thing you can get, the thing that can go wrong the most is your eye, which has happened to me um, when I had a, 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 a brief dip from, from painting is that your eye can, can get tired so what people take for granted a little bit is your eye can get really tired, uh, really, uh, really sorry, not tired. You can you can lose your your eye very quickly. Um, you can sort of forget how to paint really in a way. Um, so this is what in in a moment where I couldn't sort of afford models and things like that. This is why this is what I did all the time, and uh, I always I was always painting the self portraits, uh, always trying to get. Um, Always, always keeping myself busy and learning and learning and learning, and every one you do. You know the process. The process might be the same, but try doing something a little different. Again, this is what I do with self-portraits. Try doing something a little different every time. Um, try a slightly different approach. Um, so, for example, like what what I what I what I've tried in the past is in, instead of painting directly like this, which is all just sort of direct paint on the canvas over a few days. Um, I painted all of the underpainting in, uh, I did a full drawing in, in, um, in monotone, in, in white and white and black and, and a bit of brown uh, to control temperatures and then glazed over the whole thing, um, the whole thing with, 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 with color. Um, so everything was a glazing process. Then every then then other times I've tried to uh, I've tried to um, sort of paint paint like this for the first sessions. Then um, then go in and and uh, and uh, glaze over the whole thing and rebuild the values again. And I mean, there's there's so many different ways to paint, 
And the only way you sort of start designing your own aesthetic is by sort of trying all of them and a combination of all of them seem, suddenly seems to be a good option. Um, But that's that's what that's what keep that's what makes painting interesting is curiosity. Never never lose your curiosity for painting. Which at these at these academic schools you can you can you can start to do a little bit because you can start you can start uh, losing sort of uh, I don't know I mean losing sort of your your it can become a little bit stressful a little bit tiresome you can start losing your interest for painting but. It's only three years out of the rest of your life as a painter, so if you get start getting frustrated with anything, just remember that it's 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 only only a very short amount of time in in the lifespan of. I mean, I I paint complete. I I mean, again, similar process, but I paint very differently in terms of the whole thirty hour process or whatever it might be. I paint very differently now to how I came out of the school. And that is a product of, 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 of trial and error uh, and just playing around. And that, that really has helped keep my, keep my levels of, of, of curiosity high. Um. Can, uh, I can I can go forever on this. So I mean, the lighting's still quite good. So if if you're happy just to keep keep going, I'm happy. Depending on what what time is it now? Six. 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 Well, we can we can do another half, half an hour or so. Sound good? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, and then we've sort of done then we've done the three hours because we started a bit. Whatever, whatever you whatever you want. I'm 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 at your at your disposal. So I'm happy. And, uh, probably do a little bit of a beard and <laughs> this is this is another this is sometimes a little habit of mine is I sort of leave leave the mouth a little bit maybe too late but uh in fact let's get to that now So many little little nuances in painting a beard. So many little subtle, subtle bits. A lot of painting as well is just is sort of is sort of uh, in a way it's sort of feeling. It's like. Uh, like you sort of get, you can get a sense for something that feels three-dimensional or, or feels like it's not working with the painting or, um, it's like sort of, I remember saying to a student, just like, it's like not, not so much, some, some people try, try too hard to think and not enough to feel. Um, like it's like it's like almost like developing a sense. You know, you have to sort of you have to you have to feel feel your way around a painting, um, <laughs> which is it, quite quite often like you can you, you sort of quite often I think, um, or what what I do quite often with with my own paintings is um, I sort of finish them um, to what I believe is sort of a finished standard um, and then I uh, and then I put them I hide I put them away I hide them uh, turn them around face the wall or whatever um, for a couple of weeks and then I turn around uh, I turn them around and ask myself how do I feel about this like what what is the what is the general feeling about this painting um, and can I 
not not just emotionally, just in terms of you know what it what it needs. Um, and quite often you can find quite often in, in a lot of areas of painting there's something that you oversee or you don't you don't immediately notice. Um, Uh, and you turn around, turn it around after a couple of weeks, and you think, okay, well, this this really doesn't feel right. And that generally is is, I think, like sort of how. The, sort of the best way of describing, describing painting. It can be emotional as well. I mean, it can be sort of, this doesn't feel, right spiritually or, or, you know, mentally, but. Um, what when I just did that? Yeah. Um, yeah, I was sort of, sort of, disputing, uh, still am uh, disputing the, uh, the sort of positioning, so several so things as I come down to here. That. Um, yeah, so I'm sort of covering that up. I mean, if I'm covering the mouth up and something looks wrong, I mean, aside from my nose being a little too bulbous at the moment. Um, what I'm doing is I cover the mouth or I cover the, the, the eyes. I'm sort of saying, how does, how does that distance feel from mouth to nose? And, and that, that for me isn't, isn't an observational thing. Um, in a way, it's not an observational thing. It's me, it's me sort of asking, asking that of the painting. Um, I'm, I'm, asking the, I'm sort of asking the painting for, for its advice rather than uh, because a lot of these things you know we it's not it's not like um i was going to say it's not like it's not like copying a photograph but you know there are because i'm moving the painting is moving too everything everything is moving um in what i'm doing so this is not a single moment i'm not holding this pose it's not a single moment of of, of me it's a collaboration of several thousand different micro uh, movements you know if i'm if i'm staying still it's a collaboration of all these things so sometimes you know just measuring the proportion of something and saying okay this is this big this is this big okay this is that it's just not enough for the painting because you're, you're dealing with so many different micro movements that you have to sort of listen to the painting um to get to get almost a a, a more honest opinion um it's sort of it's the same with every 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 painting whether it's uh or, or drawing um it's, it's a big question what what the painting what the painting needs um versus versus what uh what is proportionally right and wrong um sometimes even with something that you think is so obvious as the okay i'm going to get the answers from 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 what I'm looking at, sometimes you just, you know, you've got so many different things, different, like I said, micro movements going on in the painting that you have to ask the painting uh, more so what, 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 what's going on. Um, that's better. Um, so even just like taking that off, I mean, I'm just like, it felt like my mouth was pulling, you know, just on the painting, it felt like my mouth was pulling that way a little too much. So I sort of thought, okay, well, I'll just take that off and see how it feels. And it um, felt better. Uh, but the, it, it's, it's, it's very much that. So when, I, when I'm sort of doing this and this, I'm asking myself about certain things. Uh, aside from just sort of seeing if there's one bit particularly wrong in the painting, I'm also asking myself, myself questions um, about this bit of the painting versus this bit. Um, and just saying, okay, well, if that feels good without the mouth, then it's the mouth. 
if that feels like, you know, my nose and my eyes are sort of weirdly positioned, then it's probably something to do with that. Um, so there's, 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 there's sort of, it's, it's always a product of, of, of sort of asking questions. And then another thing I used to say to students is, is painting is, is, is uh, when you're dealing with sort of proportions and so I'm painting the mouth, so I have to, <laughs> have to close the mouth on it. Um, painting is, is uh, when, you're, when you're looking into proportion and, and, and in fact, anything in painting, uh, painting is, is more a series of questions. Uh, it's, it's questions that you ask yourself. And what your training involves is, is training you to ask the right questions. That's how I see academic training. It's, 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 it's so much about, about training, training, training your, your, your mind to ask the right questions. And then when you graduate, it's about, it's about building. Again, this is what I was saying about this process. I use the same process. Uh, I, I, well, I, I have this sort of like subconscious approach to the start of paintings, uh, whether it's in black and white, it's, it's still the same idea of blocking in that I learned from the France Academy, uh, whether it's later glazed or whatever. The, the, the process is still the same because I'm trained to ask those questions. And then the rest of it after graduating is learn is, is is training yourself to ask those questions again and again and again until you become so familiar with them that you're asking those you're asking questions you're asking sort of you know 20 30 questions uh, 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 you know sort of to yourself in in five seconds you know you're sort of saying okay you know like I was saying before like you know everything's a question so asking about the placement of the ear and looking at the looking at how its relationship to the eyebrow and then its relationship to the nose that's already two questions then its relationship to that part of the ear and then that part of the eye that's already four questions so it's sort of but you train yourself to do that quicker and quicker and then when you've done that or when you when you're starting to train yourself and you get quicker and quicker you can ask that in a second you're doing that with your eye in a, in, a, in in set in you know in a second rather than sort of you know a, a minute or something like that, so it's 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 building up that that sort of you know that's a, a lot of what training is I think in my mind anyway is just knowing training yourself to learning the right questions to ask, and then building up a a way in which you can you can ask them uh, more subconsciously. If that makes sense. Uh, I mean, that being said, like uh, in this, particularly while painting a self portrait, because mm -hmm. you're not always still. Yeah. You know, uh, as compared to a model which is a bit more still or in the same position, mm -hmm. uh, what would your advice be for people who want to paint a self portrait? Um, or like, what are the difficulties you face, you know? And just uh, any advice? Um, hmm. Because I, I'm about to start my self-portrait. <laughs> uh, you're, you're already in third year? Yeah, third year, second term. I'm about to start my self-portrait and I was doing a value study. I was just like looking at it for doing some, like in the starting couple yeah. of days. And it's like, you have to make sure you're in the same spot, but you're not, like you said, like, you know, you're in a thousand different, different spots and you have to combine them together to make sure you look like you. Yeah, uh, yeah. On, on that note, I would say don't, um, don't get, don't don't um don't don't pressure yourself mm -hmm. into uh holding Same into thing. being i mean yeah nothing no drastic changes um but don't pressure yourself into you know i mean you can see now that i you know when i'm looking back and forth to myself now because the drawing is more or less locked in I'm very rarely looking like looking at my face and getting at the beginning I was sort of keeping myself a bit straight and trying mm -hmm. to really sort of keep a keep a, a strict eye on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um but let it let it breathe, let it move. Mm -hmm. Let it let it arrive at the conclusion that you want. Okay. 
Um, don't 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 pressure yourself too much in, in don't pressure yourself too much in copying. You're not copying. <coughs> you're translating. There's a big difference. So it's 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 you're translating what you see. You're not copying. Um, and that is that is what makes painting from life painting. You know, proper painting. Uh, painting from photograph is, is is okay, but I mean, you know, but it, it's it's painting from life. That that's what gives it that that edge. That something else, because it isn't. It isn't. It, it isn't a freeze frame of you. So never never think that it is, and don't don't treat it like it is. Feel free to move at any point. But then you know when you when you you know when you when you're lot you know even things like the positioning of my hair. That's a very sharp edge. I'm get rid of that. Um, but even the positioning of my hair, you know, it's so changeable. Um, you know, and it's so, and it's, and I sort of feel, you know, the not just the position of it, but also um, sort of the gesture of it, or the feeling that I'd want from it. Maybe I don't want this loop here. You know, and and in some parts of the process of of painting, you know, painting myself, I'll probably find. That it will it will reveal something to me that I want. I'll go ah oh, that's 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 exactly what I want. You know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so don't 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 hold yourself at gunpoint. You know to be per yeah, perfect. Yeah. And then um, you know with other things. Um, I mean, there, there. I mean, there are many things about painting a self-portrait that I could sort of ad advise on. Um, okay. Yeah. Great. So. Um, so I'm just. Slightly readjusting the nose, um, just <laughs> when I got up from the chair to have a look at it, I just realised that the nose feels a little slightly bulbous. Um, you know, and it's it's uh, this is maybe I, I'd probably be approaching this a cup uh, in the in the later days, but probably what I'll be doing is sort of thinning out the nose a little bit more as I go through. Sometimes like I, I find that there's sort of a like an amount that you can do like in, in one day of painting. Um, I don't really I don't really trust a lot of these Instagram things that are sort of like a time lapse of like, oh I did this in three hours. And it's like no you didn't. You absolutely didn't. <laughs> Um, I, and, and you know also I wouldn't want it to be that because I, I think it's as I was saying before like the process it, it's the process of trying and doing new things like I was saying it's important to have a process but it's also important to experiment um, you know painting would be so boring for me if I just did the same thing every day and then you sort of posted it on Instagram I mean for, for me it's like it's so special to be able to sort of um, you know, to sort of, sort of ex experiment and play and experience, you know, making mistakes or whatever. I mean, this is what I don't really, you know, in, in enjoy about that sort of philosophy of painting, where it's just. I mean, I accept what I'm doing now is a floating head, but I don't. I don't. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't choose to, you know, my, my finished paintings are finished paintings. They're not, they're not uh, just sort of countless, countless photo, countless, uh, countless paintings of sort of heads, heads on heads on heads on heads on heads. It's just, you lose your interest for it. Um, so much of, so much of great painting is not about how well you can paint the head. It's about how well you can paint everything else. Um, how, how well you picture making <laughs> not painting it's picture making how well can you make a painting how well can you make a picture but then a little while ago when I was talking to you it was mm -hmm. 
the finished product has lot to do even with the process of yeah. the painting yeah yeah sure yeah so like with ev with every painting yeah so with every painting i do i i turn it before i say this is finished i set it aside when i think it's finished i set it aside for two weeks and then look at it again and then i sort of say to myself okay this is when i actually start making a picture in a way this is what this is when i'm asking myself how do i make this painting and you know sometimes you sometimes you get a, a satisfactory answer with a, a few days work and then uh, sometimes it, it'll take me another month before I decide that it's finished. You know, a month of painting it, you know, repainting and painting and painting and painting. Um, that's part of, that's part of the, um, that's, that's part of the process, I have to say, is part of the, part of the, the, um, part of making a painting. When it comes to glazing and then again painting glazing so how many days in between you've been waiting so usually the stage? yeah so usually the 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 glazing the glazing i have to do when the painting is bone dry uh on, on the surface dry mm -hmm. um can be it can still be sort of it can't it doesn't necessarily have to be completely dry but it, on the surface it has to be dry um, so that'll take, you know, two weeks or whatever. Um, and then, uh, on each, I mean, it, it's, it's more or less. So, so what I'll, what I'll do is I'll, I'll put, put a glaze on and then bring them paint, essentially paint back into the glaze again. Um, so it's almost like giving me a surface in, in, in which to, to paint on again. Um, and that, um, that can take, so I can paint on it every day after I put the glaze on, but then if I want to put, then if I want to put another glaze on after that, that'll take another, I'll have to wait for it to dry, bone dry again, because the, the glaze in, with the glaze, it, you're in danger of, you're in danger of picking up all the paint that you've put on underneath and just spreading it all over the canvas if the paint isn't properly dry mm -hmm. um so that is something uh i would like to avoid when i paint but it's um or sometimes i've <laughs> sometimes as well like i've uh been a bit impatient and painted uh painted the glaze on far too early and it it smeared paint all over the over the painting but it it came out it, it worked quite nicely again it's sort of <laughs> It's sort of you never you never really know like what uh, um, you never really know what's sort of going to happen sometimes and that's that's the excitement um, you know so it's it's sort of it's sort of that in a way like uh, but in general um, I prefer to sort of glaze when everything is dry and glaze again when everything's dry and glaze again when everything's dry just so it's just. It's, it's more controllable um, and now gla glazing is a fairly fairly big part of my of my process but it is it is a it is it is it's it makes you know the time of for me it makes flesh a lot more luminous a lot more uh, special um, But it just means that the painting takes a, it takes quite a lot longer um, to sort of to produce. Um, so let's go. Let's just move to the ear. Ears are ears are ears are tr tricky things to paint. Um, a good rule of thumb um, is to really break down. I mean, like with everything that we'd be doing, really break down the shapes that you're you're seeing. 
Um, so first thing I'm going to do is design the big shape. <laughs> he says, while painting it completely the wrong shape. Something I didn't mention earlier is I also use the um, the ear with with the with the face is a very pivotal point. It's sort of when you move your head, the ears sort of move with everything. So if you if you imagine, so what I think about when I'm constructing as well is like this is a big cube, and the ears are sort of in the middle on each side of the cube, and that's just how the how the head works. So you consider the ear hole like. A Major reference point? Yeah, sort of. Uh, actually, the the base of the ear. Okay. Um, yeah, more or less. Um, just helps me helps me sort of rationalise a little bit. Um, uh, I mean, really, the big thing is just thinking thinking about it like a box. I mean, like like I was saying at the beginning, like everything. You know, just just arranging, just thinking simply gives you gives you so many like complex answers but uh it makes just asking questions so much easier a little bit of, a bit of reflected light into that as well this is <laughs> this is always what happens i just keep keep darting around the painting um but yeah in in general i use that sort of um I just think of the head as a big cube. Uh, even at this stage, just asking myself if that front plane, so the front, this sort of front part of the head and the side part feel like the right sort of, the right sort of cube. Um, and just, it's, you know, it's, it's, it, it sounds too simple but it, it really does make a huge difference the simpler you ask the simple questions that you ask a bit more red into that you don't want to another uh, sort of sort of slightly slightly sort of more further down the, re the the process sort of idea of painting as well as you don't when you when you when you have sort of you have sort of focal areas of the painting so for this for this painting this will be the focal area this this eye here it's got it's going to have it's going to have a lot of contrast between the white and the shadow around it um so this is sort of where i feel that this the focus is going to be um you don't so much want to make the focus a point uh, because then people can only look at that and they don't feel like they it's easy to look at the rest of the painting um, but it's nice to start with a focal point and then create sort of rhythms that focal I say focal rhythms um, throughout the painting that give the viewer something else to look at if you look at Rembrandt it's, he's, he's very good just with those sort of head and shoulders and hands uh, self portraits that he do he does they 're very good at sort of directing you creating a focal rhythm, not a focal point um, and that all enters into the interesting in interest of the painting, like how interesting it is to look at um, so that 's i mean that 's something i 'll think about later, but the reason I was mentioning that now is because i don 't want there to be so much contrast in this ear. Uh, because I don't want this to drive away the view, you know, to drive the viewer's attention in any way towards the towards the ear. 
So I'm not going to make it overly contrasted. And probably as well, I made it even a little too colourful for, for the contrast that I wanted. But um, it doesn't matter for now. try and kill a little bit of that colour in that. If you add if you add white to things, it usually kills the colour a little bit. And I needed to bring that up in 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 in, in value anyway. Right. You don't want to make the ear sort of glowing orange compared to the rest of the face. But you know, there's always you know later we don't again like I was saying we don't want to think too much about 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 color, um, just yet because I sort of I sort of start I, I, my palette after my palette changes uh, after the sort of the um, after after sort of the initial stages of painting my palette changes more to sort of what I'd say is like a colour orientated palette and that usually happens sort of when I'm when I'm comfortable with everything being in where I want it to be. Um, I change it to a colour palette which is so I have a larger variation of colours on my palette and instead of mixing a, a string of, of, of sort of flesh colours I just mix um, strings of uh, pure individual colours with white and then I mix in, in between those. So it makes, it's, it's more of a sort of impressionist sort of palette in a way. Um, sort of, it's sort of loosely what the impressionist did. So it's, it's, that's, that's what I sort of spend, uh, spend time. Uh, that's what, that's what, I, that's what, that's sort of my next moves um, for the palette after, after three or four days. Um, three or four days spread over spread over a, a you know a couple of weeks I, I, I like, I like I, even in between direct paint even without glaze I like I like to have time for the painting to dry I don't like there to be I, 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 I enjoy painting wet into wet but I, I also enjoy very much to sort of the qualities of painting dry into wet has as well um, it provides a very it provides a different variety of textures and I like to um, again just sort of play with that idea of creating more more variety more variation um, creating more interest in the painting uh, So when I'm doing the hair, I'm painting, painting movements. There's, there's, a, there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, sort of, you know, ways of painting hair. Um, but I sort of chase the movement a little bit first um, and see how it feels. Actually, another thing I sort of, 
very much forgot to mention is the power of squinting with your eyes, <laughs> which I've, I thought Farad is laughing because it's the first thing we should have probably <laughs> talked about. Um, but the, uh, it, it's, uh, it's, it's, the purpose of squinting is to reduce information. So when you've got all these crazy things happening with hair, what you can do is just sort of chase the big masses that you see. Um, and then, and then just very much like the, uh, like the start of the portrait, you, you start working, you start, you use those big masses as an introduction and then you start manipulating those and working, working into, uh, working into them. Um, it's another incredibly frustrating uh, 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 aspect of myself is my uh, hair, which doesn't really have has a sort of ridiculous variety of form to it. Uh, you know, I mean, there is there is this sort of idea that you sort of keep it relatively. Um, pe people love to sort of put highlights all over hair and go crazy with sort of, it always looks false. If you look at great painters, um, less is more in hair. If you look at Velasquez portraits, um, they just, you know, there's, there's, it's, it's about the, it's about the design of the silhouette, which makes the portrait, makes the painting. Um, leave it there if you're happy. <laughs> I always say that and then I just keep working on it for again for another 40 <laughs> minutes but so I think we can leave it there. A little bit I mean if there are things that I continue to change now it'd probably just be a little bit the sort of feeling of the nose feels a little bit, a little bit bulbous, a little bit heavy, but, um, but the, you know, these things, I mean, this is day one of the, of the portrait. So it's, you know, these things can go, uh, go on forever. <coughs> um, probably at some point during the, during the, during the, process on the first day I was a little 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 concerned today with just getting the the face to a sort of further level but um probably what I'd start doing is just sort of designing um exactly sort of where the clothes are the, 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 there's also a reason you know sometimes I, I leave the clothing um to to later be designed um because sometimes I want a specific specific clothing for the for the for the portrait or um or you know quite often with these things like I, I i i choose to um i choose to make 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 the the portrait studies and sort of attach them to uh to future future paintings um uh, and that that you know i mean not 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 so not so literally as attach them into future paintings but sort of use them maybe you know maybe I, I would paint this and say okay actually I want the, the painting to be this big 
not just this big. Um, and that would sort of, you know, mean it required me repainting almost exactly the same painting, but just on a different canvas. Um, arguably, I could, I could <laughs> just start off with a bigger canvas, but you, you never quite know. And I, I always treat these, um, especially just these sort of head studies, um, I always treat them um, uh, not 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 the final portraits that I do, but uh, these these little head studies that I'm doing now. It's like I I always treat these as um, as I'm, I'm almost thinking of, of of another painting that I would be using it for, um, which also makes it a bit more sort of exciting to the paint but more or less we just sort of block in that like that. Lost the light, but yeah, that would that would sort of be the idea of the painting, I guess, if I was if I was if I was doing it. But maybe I'd sort of, you know, prefer to raise that a little bit and uh, sort of maybe bring this shoulder down a little bit just to sort of bring the the motion that way a bit more. And there are lots of other things, you know, as you go through the process of the painting that that sort of can change, you know, like this sort of idea that, um, you know, where, what do I want the movement of the painting to be? You know, so maybe I'd play with just, you know, where that beard ends slightly, um, you know, where the, where, how I would control the background, you know, uh, you know, background is a lot. So maybe, I'll, you know, I want something there to detract. Maybe I make the background darker over here so the focus comes into the face here. You know, there's so many different things that you can do after resolving sort of the portrait to, to make it sort of a, a compositionally balanced painting. Um, you know, do I want this shirt to be blue or do I want it to be darker here that then allows me to sort of make, you know, maybe I want something, you know, sort of, if I'm if I if the light is sort of predominantly on this side, I want something to continue the light up here. So maybe I put something up there. There there are lots of ways if you if you if to to create sort of rhythms in painting. If 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 the painting is a little static, um, so there's lots of there's lots of things you can do in that way to finish a painting. Um, but it sort of comes at this moment. It comes sort of secondary to to just making the the painting sort of work. Um, Thank you.